Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, then welcome to my channel and today's video is my June 2022 TBR. Also known as my Pride Month TBR because it is officially Pride Month, so happy Pride Month! I definitely do have an ambitious TBR this month because I always get way too excited when it comes to choosing books for my Pride Month TBR. So yeah, I definitely have more books here than I typically like to set for myself, honestly, but it's going to be fun nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so we are going to go in alphabetical order for this eventually, but I do want to start with my current read because I will probably have this book done very soon and it will probably be done by the time this video goes up. And that book is The Shadow of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi, which is the sequel to The Rise of Kiyoshi. So The Rise of Kiyoshi takes place in the Avatar The Last Airbender universe and follows the story of Avatar Kiyoshi and just her journey of how she became the person that she is known for throughout the series. So I started this book towards the end of May. My mom and I had like this beach day and this was the book that I brought and I did end up reading a majority of this that day. I don't have that much left. I'm pretty sure it's like 40 pages at most. I do have a slightly complicated history with book one. I really enjoyed it but I read it during like one of the worst reading slumps that I've ever had and that reading slump has left kind of this lasting impact on me whenever I like think or look at this book which is not fun especially for a book that I I know that I liked. So because of all that, I was a little bit worried going into this book, but once I got past like the first couple of chapters, things started going really great. And I feel like I'm finally having the experience that I should have had with book one with this one. And I love and I needed that redemption for this series because I love this universe so much. It's a huge part of my childhood and that love has carried over into my present day. And I am just so happy to be reading this and have it like actually making me happy this time. I'm really enjoying the characters in this book probably the most and I'm also just loving being back in this world and it's been a lot of fun and I just can't wait to finish it. So the next book for this TBR is Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World which is the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Saez. Aristotle and Dante follows two boys who are like really opposite of one another however they develop this special bond once they meet and this bond ends up helping them grow into who they want to be as individuals and also help them learn the most important truths of their lives. Okay so I was supposed to read this book last month but that did not happen but I want it to be this month or at least I'm going to try my best to make it happen this month. I always talk about the atmosphere when it comes to this series because I feel like it created such a beautiful and lovely atmosphere when I read book one and I desperately want that atmosphere back. I have no idea where this story is going to go or where it is going to take me but I'm definitely ready for whatever it provides. So next up I have Cinderella is Dead by Kayla and Bayron. This takes place 200 years after Cinderella found her prince and teen girls are being required to attend this annual ball where they can be selected as wives. Those who are not chosen or never heard from again, our main character decides to flee from this ball. She goes to hide in Cinderella's mausoleum where she meets Cinderella's last known descendant and her friends. And together they vow to take down the king once and for all. This book has also been bouncing around a couple of my TBRs now, and it's also just been on my TBR for a long time in general. I actually think I pre-ordered this book when it came out, so that has definitely been a while. This book just feels like it combines a lot of things that I love. There are elements of fairy tale, and then there are like women working together. Just things that I have loved in the past and that I feel like could work very well for me in here too. This will also be my first book by this author, and I'm really looking forward to that because the next book on this TBR is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. So this follows our main character who has a hidden power over plants, and when she inherits a house from her birth mother, she gains a space for her to test her powers. But as she begins to bring the garden back to life, she uncovers that she has also inherited a secret and her ancestors are not going to let her be until she accepts that she is the keeper of this dark power of the poison garden. Now this book, th this one, it sounds so good and I just love the concept so much. Like all the books in this video sound so good, that's, that's why they're in here, but like this one specifically I am really excited for a little bit extra. I am so excited to see and explore whatever that poison garden is and like whatever the secret is too. It sounds dark and twisty and wonderful and that garden imagery is really speaking to me right now. And overall I'm just really excited to see all that this author has to offer because I feel like there's a lot of really cool stuff. 
So next up is Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is book two of the Between Earth and Sky trilogy and also the sequel to Black Sun. Black Sun is inspired by the civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas and it takes place in a city called Tova around the time of the winter solstice. This is usually a time for celebration and renewal or it would be but this year the solstice is around the same time as a solar eclipse which according to the sun priest signifies an unbalancing of the world. At the same time, a ship begins its adventure toward Tova, carrying a seemingly harmless passenger, but the captain does have her suspicions of him. I really do need to catch up to my book hauls on this channel because I totally plan to include this in one because I did haul this book recently, but we're just gonna go with it. I remember book one having a lot of queer characters and I've been wanting to read this since I got my hands on it, so it also feels like a great time to just go ahead and open this up and read it. I got so immersed and attached to book one. It's one of the books that saved my reading year last year and I just have a lot of gratitude for it for that. And I just need to know where this story is going to go and and I just need to be back in this world and have it completely capture me once again. This one is weird for me to talk about because I feel like I don't love any one character or concept from the series more than the other. I feel like I just have an appreciation for everything and how it all comes together. I will say there is one thing from book one that I was not a huge fan of, so hopefully either that will change in here or like there won't be that much of it or something. Either way, it should be a good time because like I said, there's a lot to have a good time with, or at least there should be based on book one. So next I have Heartstopper by Alice O and this is volume four. So Heartstopper follows the story of our main character Charlie who is openly gay and kind of like a high-strung overthinking type. And then this also follows our other main character Nick who is like a cheerful and soft-hearted rugby player. They become friends very quickly once they meet and Charlie is falling hard for Nick but isn't sure if he has a chance. There was no way I was going to make a TBR for Pride Month and not have Heartstopper included in that. I am both excited and devastated to be caught up to these volumes. I love these characters and the relationships so much, both the romantic relationships and also the friendships. They all just put such a huge smile on my face. I'm pretty sure we're going to be continuing with some of the more serious themes from volume three, just based on the way that volume ended. And I really like seeing the characters love and support one another in that volume. So I kind of expect something similar in here. Overall, throughout all of the volumes, this series has just played with my heart in the best way. And I am always leaving the volumes feeling better and happier than I did before I read them. And I doubt this one will be any different. So next is How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. So this follows our main character Grace who just wants her own life where she no longer feels trapped by her mother and the small cape where she lives. Her plan is to lay low until graduation, however this plan is disrupted when she meets a girl named Ava who is also trying to escape her own ghosts. They connect and develop feelings that were also not a part of Grace's plan, but Ava also has this connection to Grace's mother and both of them must figure out where to go from there and how to move forward. So this has been on my TBR for a long, long, long time. I just fell in love with this author's writing when I read Girl Made of Stars a little while ago and that was certainly a difficult read but it was also beautiful and I loved the atmosphere so much. I feel like my heart isn't ready to like go through that again because I still feel like those emotions that that book gave me to this day. But I also love and appreciate writing as stories that can do that to me and I do think this book has similar potential. I mean the stories are different so the feelings will also be different but I'm also kind of expecting to be impacted by this story in a similar way. Maybe I'm just expecting to love this book like I love Girl Made of Stars. I don't know, I just know I need to read this and also everything from this author event Eventually, my heart feels ready, but also not at the same time. And I'm also just really looking forward to this. Okay, so I just ordered this next book, and at the time I'm filming this video, it has not come in yet, unfortunately. So I'm going to be holding up a piece of paper with a picture of the cover on it as a substitute, because why not? And that book is Sovereign by April Daniels, which is the sequel to Dreadnought. So Dreadnought follows our main character Danny, who is trying to keep everyone from finding out that she is transgender. But that all changes when the superhero Dreadnought is murdered right in front of her eyes, and when he transfers his powers to her, Danny suddenly finds herself in the body that she's always thought that she should have had. However, alongside the confusions of coming out, Dreadnought's murderer, Utopia, is still on the loose, and it's up to Danny to stop her. So Dreadnought was a book that I really enjoyed overall. It's actually been a little while since I've read a superhero story, I think. 
And I want to let myself have that again because I feel like I've been accidentally depriving myself. I will say Dreadnought was also a really difficult book to read. There is a ton of transphobia and other content warning worthy and insanely frustrating comments and characters. So that part of the story was definitely not fun, but the series also did have a lot of fun things. I really enjoyed our main character and I remember her having a really fun personality. And also, and I'm not sure I've ever said this before because I'm usually indifferent at best to this when it comes to books, but I remember really liking the fight scenes. There are things and concepts from book one that I would definitely love to see more of in here. I am looking right at you, morally gray group of people. And then I'm also looking forward to more from like the heroes and villains side of things as well. I also remember reading Dreadnought quickly, which is perfect for a month where I want to read just a ton of things. So next up is The Ever Cruel Kingdom by Rin Chupeko, which is the sequel to The Never Tilting World. This story takes place in a world that has been split in two. One side is day and the other side is night. There are two sisters, one rules each side, and their respective daughters slash goddesses have to embark on a journey to heal their broken world. This is a book that is broken into four different points of view and is also described as a mix between Frozen and Mad Max Fury Road, which I just love that there is a book where we can combine those two things because I find that to be such a fun and interesting combination. So I read book one a few years ago now. I think I actually remember it being in my first ever wrap up or something, which is fun and also kind of nostalgic for me, but it also has been a while since I've read it and I don't know how that's going to go. Because I remember having to like reread things in book one to fully understand what was happening because there was a lot going on and I just highly, highly doubt that I remember all that I need to going into this book. But what I do remember is really loving the concepts and the romances. There is like a star cross thing going on here and I remember that hitting me pretty hard. And I just really enjoyed exploring the world itself and all that it has to offer because I do feel like this series has a lot to offer. I just may have to read a recap or something first and then also keep that recap close by while reading this one. Either way, I'm definitely excited to return to this and I'm curious to see where it all goes. So the final book for this video is The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee, which is the sequel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. So Gentleman's Guide follows our main character whose grand tour of Europe and quest for pleasure and vice is in danger. After the tour is over, he will be forced into taking over his family's estate and following all the responsibilities that come with that. Therefore, he is determined to make the most out of this year-long tour with his sister sister and childhood friend slash crush, but his recklessness ends up turning the trip into a manhunt across Europe. Okay, so I heard that there was some arrow slash ace representation in here, and we love that, and we also really love book one. And I need to catch up to this series desperately. Once again, it's been a little while since I've read book one, but I don't expect that to be as much of an issue going into this because I feel like it stayed in my memory pretty well. I say that now, but when I actually open up this book, we'll see how that changes. I'm also excited to just explore Felicity's character more. I enjoyed her in Gentleman's Guide, and she's definitely a character that I'm looking forward to seeing more of. I don't really have any idea what to expect from this series moving forward, but I think it'll be a good time nonetheless. I remember having a ton of fun in the first book, so I hope that shows up throughout the rest of the series and in this book as well. Okay, so those are all of the books that I will hopefully be choosing from this month. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Once again, happy Pride Month, everyone. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that will be around here if you want to do that, and hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye.